In this video, we're gonna be installing some baseboard and we're gonna do it right now. I am so close to being done this bedroom remodel and my next step is to install baseboard trim. I'm sure you've seen a ton of videos on people installing baseboard trim, but if you're watching this, you're gonna see another one, I guess. It is really easy to do, but I figured I would make a video showing you how I do it. I'm using this style baseboard. It's really common, fairly inexpensive, and it's gonna match the rest of the baseboard trim in my house. So, let's get into it. First thing I wanna do is mark out where my studs are in the wall so I know where to nail the baseboard in and I can hit something solid. You can see here that I have these screws here. One good thing about doing the drywall and the mudding on your own is you can do yourself a favor and leave the last screws on the bottom row here exposed so you know exactly where your studs are. Of course you could, before you do the floor, mark the floor and uh, say you're doing something like carpet where you install the trim first and hold it up so that you can tuck the carpet underneath it. You'll be able to see that, but if I was to mark the floor, I had to do this on top of it, so I would have had to mark that anyways. But this is a really easy way to tell me exactly where all the studs are. So I'm just gonna take some tape so I don't have to mark up this floor, and it'll be really easy to see with this bright green tape. I also like to leave my tape far enough away where when you put the baseboard on, you're not gonna have to try and pull the tape out from underneath the baseboard, but you will still know where these studs are. Also, things like this, just make sure the wall is clear of obstructions, that's some extra mud or extra paint. So just go around and make sure that's all cleaned up. Now that I have all my studs marked around the entire room, I gotta choose a place to start. And there really is no rhyme or reason to where you start, but the way I like to do it is to do long pieces like this one first. Because what I'm gonna do in each of these corners is cope into the other straight piece of baseboard. I'll show you that later. But it's a lot easier to put a cope on a piece like this, which is like a six footer and do a small cope in there, which is like an inch and a half. So that way I can just cut this piece straight and then deal with the copes on either side a lot easier. So take a measurement for this one. One eleven and a half. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna be cutting my pieces one at a time. I have gone through room by room and marked on a piece of paper or a piece of wood every single measurement. After a while, you get used to how uh, to measure for this stuff and you can actually cut all your copes and all your outside 45s and everything all at once. Say you have to go outside and cut everything on a chop saw. You could also bring the chop saw inside the room you're working in, but there's not a ton of pieces and like I said for this video I'm just going to do one at a time. So one straight cut on each end, 111 and a half. I'm going to mark this 112 and cut that because I don't have a ton of room down here. I gotta get a bigger shop. And I'm only doing this because I don't have the room to run my baseboard all the way that way or that way. But I wanna make sure both ends are square. That's why I'm not making just one cut. bump into any walls. A piece in here. Perfect. Make sure it's not too tight. What you can do is get both ends in and bend it out like this and then push it in, but you don't want to push it in too hard because you could crack either of these corners. It's better to take your time and trim it down and make it perfect so you don't end up messing anything up. Now you will notice something on the bottom here. If you take a look in the middle, this house is pretty old. So we have a gap right here and on both sides, it's nice and tight to the floor. 
So there's a couple of things that we could do. So one thing we could do is we could take a shim and hold it up to this gap like this and run it along here and scribe this. And what that'll do is it'll make a mark right here that you can cut and then this baseboard will sit down nice and even with no gap. The only thing about that is now I'm going to have to cut this piece of baseboard and that piece of baseboard to match the height that you scribe off of this. And really I would rather not do that and keep this baseboard at the height it's at. So there is one more option. Here's the other option and it's really simple. You just push the baseboard down so it's tight. Now the only bad thing about doing it that way where I push it down and make it tight is I'm going to put more pressure on both ends uh, and this is a floating floor and it's supposed to be able to move around and I've heard some people say don't put your baseboard super tight to this stuff because it will stop it from moving around and you'll have problems. Also in the instructions of this floor they said to not install it on a floor that is out of level a quarter inch within 10 feet. My house was built in 1946 so there is no floor like that and I still installed it. Am I gonna regret it? Well, maybe. Since I'm already messing things up. One on the bottom, one on the top. What do you think? Good idea, bad idea, let me know. Looks like I should have listened to my own advice over here and uh, left that screw visible so I didn't have to do all this. I found the stud, it's okay guys. Just try and push it tight to the wall so there's no gap. And just watch your fingers. Obviously, if you're in a bathroom or something too, be mindful of where the pipes might be. Definitely don't want to be shooting into a pipe. I've done that before. this where it needs to be and I'm gonna cut it just shy and then I can just move this over I'd rather cut it shorter than longer inch and a half I'll show you how to cope for inside corners some people will cut to 45 degree angles like this on the baseboard and they will hope that their walls are absolutely perfect and that this matches up kind of like that. And a lot of times what you end up having is something like this where there's a gap at the top or a gap at the bottom. And it just never really works out when you do 45s like this. So that is why I do something called coping. If you don't know what it is, I'm gonna show you. All you have to do is picture this as the piece that you're coping into along that wall, that baseboard heat is right here so I need this piece right here and this piece will be going into it like this whichever end of that baseboard is diving in like this you want to cut a 45 degree angle just like that on your chop saw and what you're gonna to want to do is follow this profile right here that was cut from the saw and just cut that out and to do that you use something that's called a coping saw and when you make this cut you want to try and angle it so you don't want to go straight like this you want to angle it this way and it kind of back cuts back here so you have nothing holding you up against this piece of baseboard that will maybe create a gap right here to make it easier and quicker you can cut this with a jigsaw which I'll, I'll show you I've angled my jigsaw so that I can back cut it like I said Something like that. And then what you have left is this profile right here. Again, angle your coping saw and just be very careful and go nice and slow. Start the blade like this 
and that happens all the time. A little piece up top broke off. And you can do this with any kind of trim. It's gonna be the same thing. You just cut that 45 and follow whatever profile the trim has. So nice and easy. this little piece right here. And then when you're done, say this is the piece against the wall, you have this, and it makes a nice, perfect cope. And now I can cut this piece to length. You'll notice I used way more than I needed. And that is because this is an inch and a half long piece and there is no way that I'm gonna cut this straight and then do a 45 on an inch and a half piece. That would just be silly and I like my fingers. So now I can cut this. And throw it into place. Let's see how it's gonna fit. Pretty good. Uh, here's how I like to attach small pieces like this. I just load it up with caulking. Way too much caulking. Is that hacky? Now I can push that piece in there. Make sure it's spreading out that caulking in back. And now I'm just gonna put a couple pin nails in this, if I can reach it. Once that's all painted, that'll look great. The combination of the caulking and the pin nails are what's gonna hold that in. The reason I use pin nails is because if I try and get the bigger nails in the corner there to get into that stud, I could end up splitting that small piece of base. So there you go. There's those two pieces done. This piece is gonna be the same thing, except you're gonna have a cope on the opposite end. Do a straight cut right here. And then I'm gonna do this long piece, do a small cope piece over there, and a tiny cope piece right there. And then we can figure out what to do with this closet. But we'll do these pieces first. Sixty-seven and a quarter. <laughs> well, this one is just unavoidable. Look at that hump. There's a big hump right there. So it looks like I'm going to scribe this one. Okay. So I'm going to put this about where I think it needs to be. Just want it to be somewhat level. Oh. Put something down here to hold it up, like that. Uh, old houses, man. We got my little scrap piece here. Don't ever use a table saw freehand. But if you're gonna, wear safety glasses.
better. Got to do what you got to do. See how the floor is on this side. Mm. That's a little tight. I'm gonna trim it. I don't wanna crack a corner. If you need to take just a tiny amount off of your trim, this is what I like to do. I pull the chop saw down like this, and I butt my trim to the blade and hold the piece right there and then when I pull the blade up the teeth will pop out and they will actually cut just a tiny maybe a sixteenth of an inch off of your trim perfect and look at that floor nice This is about a two inch piece and I'm going to see if I can get some finish nails in here without splitting it. No splits. All right, now it's time for the closet. And obviously I have this bulkhead here. This is for the basement stairs. So I have to work around that. The first thing I did was cut this piece which is gonna go right here. As you see, this right here is a little awkward, so I gotta figure out what to do. So what I could do is cut this trim at an angle and just paint it up and then rip this trim, make some kind of nice angle right here, but I think that's gonna look terrible. And this space right here is useless. If anything, I'm gonna drop stuff down there and get it stuck. So I'm gonna block this off. I'm gonna use something like this, of course a bigger piece. So it'll look a little something like that and it'll extend this whole way here and cover up all that nastiness and make it so that I don't drop stuff down there and lose it. So I cut my temporary piece so I can get an idea of this angle and the length here so I know that I need to cut it a little bit longer and have it at a little bit more of an angle and the angle doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's more than what this is so that this goes tight like that so I'm gonna take some measurements and rip a piece that'll go right there one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is ripping stuff at a 45 degree angle on a table saw I am, however, very comfortable and confident doing it with a circular saw. And since there's more than one way to do things, that's what I'm going to do. Maybe when I get a nicer table saw, I, I don't want to say that I don't trust this one, but maybe I don't trust myself enough to be careful enough not to cut my finger off. So I have my piece set up here. I have it marked. I'm just going to follow this line with the circular saw. This is my rough cut mark and then I can cut it to length and put it into place. Okay. 
let's see how we did. Oops. Now I'm gonna have to put something in there to prevent that from happening. But I think that's gonna work. If I make sure it's straight, this is gonna be completely even with the baseboard, which is good. I'm gonna make a small mark right here, and then I make sure this is even on the back side here. Make a little mark right there. I wanna actually bring it up a little bit because it is a little off. I also chopped out the back side a little bit like this so that it would go nice and tight right here. This is the important part, making sure this looks good. And it does. Might just need to cock it in right here in the middle. Now I'm gonna take a tape measure and mark down three quarters of an inch. Do the same on this side. Well, ideally, I would put a cleat right here, uh, but the thing is, I'm not ever gonna be able to nail that into anything. So what I'm gonna do is do a piece right here, like this, I'll cut that, and then I'll do a piece on this end, and that will at least stop it from twisting while it's in there, and I'll be able to nail it into here, and then nail the baseboard into this piece here. Make sure everything's gonna work before I nail anything into place. And cut that one a little long. Really. Unless I got them opposite. Aha, that's what it is. I'll take my piece, pop it in there. Could be a little tighter over here, but I can nail it like this and then cock in the rest. Gotta let everybody know who the hack was. I still have to cock and paint everything in. Um, I think that's gonna work. Not my proudest work, but <laughs> it, it'll stop things from falling into that crevice and make it so that this doesn't look as awkward. So I'm happy with it. So I put my last two pieces of base in. I didn't bother filling in right next to this door trim on that side or that side, they're so small and they're hidden in the closet and nobody's gonna see them except for you. Don't say anything. But I filled all the nail holes, cocked it all in. I don't know, I think it looks good. What would you guys have done? Leave me a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you if you have to do baseboard like this, maybe you have an older home like mine is and you learned some tips. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching as always. We'll see you on the next one. If you are not bringing your chop saw into the room um, and cut all your pieces, you, if you do it enough, you can figure out how to mark and I'm just babbling. Always, always babbling.